Vampires and all manner of undead terror still haunts the barren halls and basilica of Castle Cronquist in Ustalov. Since the fall of the Whispering Tyrant, the great Gothic Cathedral of Vampire Lord Malleus has stood silent, except for the eerie tolling of its imposing clock tower. The building remains untouched by time, its stone and wood healing damage and erosion every night. But now that the Whispering Tyrant is free, it's only a matter of time before he recruits Lord Malleus back into his ranks. The future does not bode well for Ustalov or the surrounding area. Let's explore Castle Cronquist today on Galorian in depth. Continuing on our gothic themes that we started in the last video, we'll be exploring a gothic castle that was presented to us in Pathfinder 1st Edition. I hope that you can take this and get inspiration from it for your Pathfinder 1st Edition or 2nd Edition games. I used it in my own home game and my players really enjoyed it. So without further ado, let's get into a deep dive of Castle Cronquist. Castle Cronquist is the fortress home for the Lord Vampire Malleus, who served as one of the Whispering Tyrant's most trusted servants during the 33rd century. Malleus was entrusted with the conquest of most of northern Usulov. This did not sit well with his arch nemesis, Lord Vampire Lovick Sirovich, who lives underneath the streets of Caliphus. The conflict between Malleus and Serovich led to the success of the Crusaders during the Shining Crusade to reclaim the city of Vontil, and possibly turning the tide of the war itself. When Gallus Fire fell in 3827 AR, Malleus was forced to retreat to Castle Cronquist and await the Whispering Tyrant's return. The Fang Gate consists of an immense barbican flanked by a pair of imposing three-story towers. The ramparts between these towers house the mechanical workings for a pair of massive iron gates. Constructed of a hundred barbed prongs, the gates interlock like a set of gruesome fangs when closed. Lord Malleus once possessed a ring that allowed him to scry through the eyes of the gargoyles above this gate, but no one knows what became of this ring. Beyond the Fang Gate runs a long, open-air corridor. On either side rise tiered steps, each of which is inset with an arch filled with ancient and badly weathered human skulls. This section of the castle consists of a large bailey lined with low stone cells. Here Malleus stationed hundreds of undead troops whose commanders could quickly muster into the courtyard. Ten foot tall heaps of bones lie scattered among this area, the slumbering corpses of Malleus' waiting troops. Twenty-five skeletal lords can animate from each heap at an alarming rate. Over 100 feet in diameter and twice as high, the tower known as the Midnight Spire is divided into five floors. The top floor provides a stunning view of all of Castle Cronquist and the rest of the estate. The Midnight Spire also houses several undead war machines magically fashioned from the bones and sinew of Malice's dead enemies. The infamous clock tower of Cronquist looms over the rest of the castle from the center of the bailey endlessly ticking away like a great diseased heart. The great gears of the clock's upper chambers click softly as elaborate machinery is moved, not by precisely arranged clockwork, oh no, but by the marching of lines of skeletal slaves. Some even crawl, their legs bones being worn down over centuries of endless toil. Despite this, the clock has kept perfect time for centuries. The second and third floors house a vast library and the clockwork workshop of one Dr. Erin Ornislavna. Designs and drawings hung on the walls depict her horrifying and gruesome works. 
several of her half-animal, half-clockwork inventions prowl the halls and various states of assembly. On the ground floor, narrow corridors run between several large stone wall chambers. Near the end of the Shining Crusade, Malleus crammed these massive windowless holding cells with human prisoners for his vampires to feed upon, and the walls are still black with their blood. Several heavily armed morgues lurk here. Their past barbaric deeds are legendary, but after so long without battle to engage them, they've fallen half mad with boredom. The facade of this two-story granite building consists of twin arcades separated by decorative trifora. Tall arches inset with black and purple glass panes run the perimeter, though during daylight hours these block out any light from entering. A 20-foot wide open-air walkway surrounds the entire building and is flanked by four stone pillars topped with gargoyles carved to resemble bat-winged skeletons. In the north end are more abandoned cells, and doors to the east lead to a long corridor connecting to the Hall of Victims. A huge copper dome tops this diabolical tower of dark reddish marble, the Blood Basilica. A narrow projection encircles each floor of the basilica, and a great ring of gruesome gargoyles hang from each one. Perched upon the dome is what appears to be a huge metal gargoyle, but in fact is a winged iron golem. One of Lord Malley's more comfortable crypts rests in the basilica's top floor, sequestered behind a maze of deathless servants, vicious traps, and maniacal haunts that recreate a number of the vampire's worst atrocities. These defenses of Malleus favorite crypt include corpses of his five most worthy defeated adversaries, each returned to life as a blasphemous, unique undead thrall. In the lowest level of the basilica, a nondescript trap door leads down into the dungeon below. No one has lived to tell what horrors might dwell in the dungeons underneath the castle conquests. Even after centuries of inactivity, Lord Malleus remains the undisputed ruler of Castle Cronquist. For almost 900 years, Malleus has waited. In coffins within Castle Cronquist and in its catacombs he slept, sometimes for centuries, awaking only for brief periods either to gauge the state of the world beyond his fortress walls or when trespassers have demanded his attention. Among Malleus's trusted advisors and lieutenants are the two icy grave sisters, Savaldness and Tinagardni, the Nosferatu swordsman, Av and the ghost pastor Broman Shai. Zombie lord and alchemist Irene Ornislavna has worked with her lover and assistant Cordavo to produce some of Malice's most insidious war machines. When her work was interrupted by the explorer Kovtgar Hawes, she quickly captured him and turned him into one of her most prized experiments. Many other threats lurk in the walls of Castle Cronquist, and perhaps one day there will be heroes that are able to defeat it, but until then it waits, ever ready to be deployed by the Whispering Tyrant. Thank you.